Thank you for the introduction. Um, okay, I'm, I'll be talking about this, uh, the uh, scalar curvature of Riemann metric uh, strictly decreasing locally. Uh, that's what I'm going to talk about. Um, I'll explain what this big scale means soon. So let me uh, uh, start with the uh, old work. So in 1974, uh, a geometric motor has shown that for for any Riemannian metric G G zero, uh, one can find a smooth path of matrix, uh, uh, let's say from zero to epsilon, uh, such that total scalar curvature can strictly decrease. Um, and uh, let me see, how can I put it down? Ah, okay. And uh, when they when he choose this uh, matrix, he could uh, choose uh, GT deform only in a ball. So this is quite a local construction, so that total scalar curvature decrease. Now, uh, in 1990s, uh, Low Camper, another geometer, con made a conjecture, a uh, much stronger conjecture, that um, if you have a uh, higher dimensional, higher means bigger than two, higher dimensional manifold and the ball in it. This ball, maybe topological ball, um, it's not so sensitive about the, uh, exactly what ball is. Then there is a C infinite continuous path of Riemannian matrix uh, such that a matrix doesn't change outside the ball but rich curvature is uh, strictly decreasing in T on B. So since this is uh, important uh, in, our, uh, in our presentation, so, so it's, a, it's a manifold, uh, and uh, we just think of B, large or small, and then uh, we start with the matrix G0, and uh, we fix a uh, matrix outside the B, but just uh, strictly decrease the rich curvature. And uh, I think this is quite a difficult conjecture. Um, so uh, actually, uh, about the rich curvature, after this conjecture, not much is known, not much is explored. So, uh, and also the scalar, even if, uh, oops, even if uh, it's not rich curvature, but it's scalar curvature, it's not known. It's not completely settled. Um, so just the scalar curvature decreasing only in a ball. That's uh, uh, in most the Riemannian matrix. Uh, uh, G for most the Riemannian matrix, uh, scalar curvature decreasing on a ball holds, but the, uh, it's not completely settled. So I began to look at uh, this example for the scalar curvature, and uh, oops. so we may call uh, for convenience uh, uh, such a path. Uh, as a rich curvature melting of G0 on B. So just by saying melting for the uh, situation above, uh, I think it saves time. So melting means uh, it's like a snow melting, so that I'm thinking of curvature decreasing as melting. Okay. And then, um, perhaps I'm not just this. But uh, if we have a such matter exists, but with the scalar curvature replacing rich curvature, then it will be called the scalar curvature melting. So. In this talk, I will talk about scalar curvature melting. Um, this uh, melting is related to the certainty to the deformation. So it's about deforming scalar curvature. So it has to do with the deformation theory of a scalar curvature functional. Um, then um, there is a, a, a relevant uh, a local scalar curvature deformation theory, for example, by Corvino. And uh, we think of the, uh, this function SD. What is SD? SD S means scalar curvature functional defined on the space of a Riemannian matrix, uh, but we restrict it to a domain D. We think of this curvature functional, but then you may say, well, what happens to the whole manifold M? Here we have M, and uh, let's say D or B play the same role. So. Um, so in fact, uh, I maybe I simplified the, the story, uh, but actually uh, that scalar function is something like that. 
this s uh, starts with the, uh, so we start with the g, g, g naught uh, and, uh, and then think of the uh, deformation only inside the ball, fixing g0 outside of p. So just move a matrix inside. So we, sh so we start with g0 and uh, moving, so, so we define uh, this uh, SD. That's what SD means here. So, uh, so the, uh, and then uh, if uh, the Corvino theory says that if uh, the derivative uh, of this scalar cur curvature functional is a subjective, uh, then uh, scalar curvature melting exists. This looks uh, natural because uh, if uh, you can have the uh, derivative uh, uh, decreasing, certainly it, mean, it means that one can move a scalar curvature up and down. So particularly, you can, stick, you can lower down. Um, and uh, it turns out later by, uh, by some, uh, some quite a Riemannian geometric or general relativity argument that for, me for most of met metric, for generic metrics, uh, this is a subjective. So it means that for, gene for generic metrics, uh, this uh, scalar curvature melting always exists. Now then, the question is how to melt a Riemannian metric which doesn't satisfy this condition. So now, um, just for comparison with the uh, global case, global means the whole manifold uh, scalar curvature deformation. So, so here, let's I just put S without D, it means S uh, uh, defined on the space of uh, Riemannian matrix on a closed manifold. Okay, so for this S, uh, we can characterize, actually some people in 1970s, 80s, characterize this one. The derivative uh, at the matrix is subjective, usually subjective, uh, unless uh, in this case. Uh, which flat metric or a metric with a positive constant scalar curvature with some property. So a uh, particular example is the round metric on spheres or uh, Euclidean metric, that's one of the rich flat metric, right? So particularly round metric on spheres is one of the prototype uh, metrics. Uh, uh, this is uh, such that this derivative is not subjective. Uh, uh, so, and then one may, uh, so here, there is a relation that, so if you think of a D here S, uh, and if you compare with D S of a D, uh, D um, if this is subjective, uh, if uh, this is a subjective uh, for every, uh, what it may sound tautologically trivial remark, but the, uh, um, then this will imply DSA is subjective. This may sound trivial. Uh, yeah, it is trivial, but the, uh, this D means, um, uh, d this D may be, may be the whole manifold M. In that case, really trivial. But the, uh, uh, we are thinking that if a D is just a real small balls, um, if a this is subjective for, maybe I can put that every small balls, D, then it's a less, uh, tri less uh, trivial. But anyway, if this holds, uh, this is selective. So, so usually, um, this condition is more stronger, more restrictive uh, than the selectivity of this one. So even if uh, this is a selective uh, on a manifold, uh, but you don't know whether this is a selective. So, um, so, okay, next up. Uh, so here, let me uh, tell you so what I have done. Uh, so, so here, uh, there is, this is a long sentence, but simply speaking, it means uh, scalar curvature melting exists uh, if uh, the, uh, the metric is uh, one of the following. Say Euclidean, any Euclidean metric, any um, Einstein Fubini study metric, and the 4D hyperlink metric, these are four dimensions, but actually, I, I think uh, this holds for the uh, any dimension. Actually, although I just put down these uh, few examples, but actually, um, 
I will explain uh, some soon later that um, for any Einstein metric, this holds. This uh, scalar curvature melting exists. Uh, that's what I have, have uh, found out. But anyway, at this point, uh, let's uh, go for this question. So, so since I just showed a few examples uh, where scalar curvature can melt down, so what about the uh, melting of uh, general matrix? Can you say really melting exists uh, for any? So let me explain here at this point what is big scale melting. It's the uh, uh, same definition as the uh, melting that you have seen. Uh, it's the same wording, but only this part is uh, included. So this uh, scalar curvature is less than minus m, m. So what is m? m can be any number. So for any number, the uh, g epsilon is the final metric of the family. So scalar curvature of, curvature of the uh, final metric is less than the any given number inside the uh, half ball. So here, half a ball, uh, I just uh, put down half here, but without making it precise. So B ball, B a ball, so this B1, so if B is a, a one first given ball, then the uh, B half uh, is uh, some, uh, some other uh, sub ball in B, a uh, fixed, fixed ball. So, uh, so that then we call a uh, big scale melting um, because inside inside ball in the small ball we have a scalar curvature less than any big any big number so we call it big scaling the reason why I uh, bring in this big scale scalar curvature melting is uh, when you get scalar curvature melting usually what you get is uh, uh, just a small melting very small melting because it usually come, come from, think of the, uh, the uh, derivative, when the derivative uh, of, uh, derivative of uh, scalar curvature is uh, subjective, then you can perturb uh, the matrix, the scalar curvature down, uh, because this is uh, by implicit function theory and theorem, you can only uh, ship, uh, bring it down just by small amount. So usually you get small melting, but here, we, we are, I'm talking about, I'm uh, defining uh, this here, uh, big scale. Uh, a relevant, uh, 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 the, uh, the related work is Rokam proved something like this. Uh, this is not quite melting, but the, I guess uh, maybe I can mention about this. Uh. So Rokam, so let's say that, oops, uh, Let's visualize manifold uh, as one dimension like this and say we have a ball here and uh, then uh, we have function. So we are given scalar as a metric and the scalar curvature may, let's think of this one as a kind of graph. Uh, so scalar curvature of the uh, metric is like graph, graph uh, so something like this. Uh. Then here, f, uh, we are thinking of a function f uh, such that f is equal to S G outside B, but inside B smaller than F. So um, the uh, such a function may be something. It's the same here as uh, S G, but the, uh, it may be very small, very small, very uh, s smaller than, much more negative than this one. F can be any such a function, and then um, it says that for each epsilon. You can find the metric such that outside the ball, uh, it's the same as the metric, but inside you deform the metric so that the scalar curvature is more or less close to F. So the scalar curvature, you can find the metric such that scalar curvature is roughly like that. So that's uh, this uh, kind of, uh, this implies that one can locally deform a metric as much as you like uh, down somewhere, right? So it, but it's, a, it, it's not melting, it does not. So when you look at the, uh, the, the nature of proof, uh, he, he does a surgery, uh, quite a big size surgery, so that you don't see, um, you don't see melting. Actually, melting is uh, impossible in this uh, argument. So, so now let me explain what's the meaning of a big scale melting. So big scale melting provides another uh, level of challenging problem than small melting. 
A small melting is interesting for Riemannian geometry of related fields such as general relativity, but big scale melting may get related to topological questions. So, for example, connectedness of a space of Riemannian matrix with a scalar curvature less than or equal to some number alpha. Um, because if, uh, yeah, if we have a certain metric with a scalar curvature less than alpha, starting with that metric, if you can pull down somewhere, as you, as, as you like, pull down quite negative, then you can get to the now really neg negative, um, the, the metric with the negative, negative matrix. So then, um, for example, Locam proved that the uh, space of a negative scalar curvature is contractible. So, uh, if you get connected with such a steel theory, then you can, uh, you can get to the conclusion that, oops, uh, yeah, you can get to the conclusion that the space of Riemannian matrix uh, with the, this, this scalar curvature less than or equal to alpha may be uh, connected or contractible. So this uh, uh, big scale melting and small scale melting gives quite, uh, oh, so big scale melting gives uh, a lot more effect uh, than small melting. Although small melting itself is, uh, is interesting uh, uh, Riemann for Riemannian geometric sake. Uh, Okay, now um, l I would like uh, to talk more about round metric on spheres because uh, first uh, um, I found many examples uh, of uh, where there exists a big scale melting, but among them round round metric on spheres are uh, the distinguished one. Uh, by the way, it's, uh, it's an example where DS is not subjective. So uh, this theorem says that. Well, uh, Rob, well, this, even reading one by one of the, 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 these lines, you can, I can just say that on S4, on S4, let me just mention about S4, S4, the early is the being melting. That's what he's saying, being melting. So you see, scalar curvature of the last, the final metric G delta, G delta satisfies minus, less than minus M on the half ball. Here, PS is any, any point on S4. S4 is a symmetric, so any point is fine. So any, yeah. So even though I'm talking about S4, uh, but actually, such a big scale melting exists on any metric with a constant curvature and also really Einstein metrics. Um, Einstein, met if I'm going to explain Einstein metrics, then I have to bring in other technolo te technological uh, uh, Stuff. So it, today I just try to com convey some, uh, some how can I do it, uh, at least on S4 in this talk. So, so on S4, things can be quite concrete. So I could start with the uh, concrete metric like this. So here uh, I try with the uh, G tilde. I got this kind of a shape of matrix from some other context. Actually, when I study uh, almost the color metric, I got to, uh, I got this uh, shape and then somehow I, I thought that uh, this may get related to this deformation of scalar curvature theory. So, so this may look strange, but here you see F uh, appears uh, here, top, uh, bottom and top, and H appears here. So there are two functions to be determined. Uh, and here R is the uh, number, R is a large number. Actually, if we put if we have capital F equal zero, if capital F H both equal one, in that case, this is uh, the standard uh, round metric on S4 with the radius R, capital R. And here, small r low, low is polar coordinate. So here, uh, I'm thinking of S4. Uh, on S4, I give you the uh, so we have a stereographic projection from S4 to R4. Stereographic projection as a P, Pi, Pi, and the uh, stereographic projection, then I, I use a coordinate x1, x2, x3, x4. But then, uh, um, I, instead of using this one, I thought that R set a polar coordinate here, low phi polar coordinate here, it can be used. So here, oh sorry, this is sigma here. So you see, uh, R theta low sigma appears. So that's this polar coordinate. So 
when I describe S4, I use this coordinate here. So R law appears here, okay. So this is the deformation the form of uh, the round matrix of radius R. And then uh, by one can find that the scalar curvature as follows. So then uh, we found that we, we observed that. So here, although it looks complicated along, it's not complicated. <laughs> but here, you see um, negative size here. This is quite, this all squared term, so it's a, just a negative part. So, uh, uh, so if uh, I can get this, these all equal zero, then the scalar curvature will be uh, good. So uh, here, this part here involves F, capital F, one, two, three places. And here you see F and H are symmetric role. So H as F appears here, H appears here in three places. So I thought that this, is, uh, this can be solved by ODE uh, getting solution of uh, this whole equal zero and this whole equal zero and from the F and H. So uh, it was uh, doable and uh, we got that after we found such F and H, we got scalar curvature as follows. Um, why the, uh, so, he, oops. so here you see uh, R squared, uh, something squared, it, that appears here. So, scalar, so if this whole vanishes, then this multiplied with this one will cancel it, and you will have uh, R uh, 12 uh, over R squared. So that's what I get here, 12 over R squared, and uh, here you have all negative terms. So, uh, as I told you again, if F H or so this is a partial derivative of F uh, with respect to law. So if F and H is equal to one, this vanishes and we get the uh, scalar curvature of the uh, round matrix. So F uh, if F and H increase is not zero, then this will just uh, decrease down the scalar curvature. Oh, so uh, I thought that this is a good starting point. So in this way. Um, so I got some metric, some metric, uh, G tilde, which is too long, right? So um, just by choosing, uh, here I will choose, uh, oops, oh, sorry, I, 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 I'm, yeah, go forward, backward is confusing here. Um, yes, just by choosing F uh, uh, spotted in F and H spotted inside a small ball, uh, you can have the metric same as the uh, round metric outside the ball, but inside only you have the uh, negative uh, uh, scalar curvature less than this one. So that's what I get the uh, first. Uh, sorry. So so the first metric G tilde is asymmetric to the round metric outside the uh, radius one ball, but inside uh, the scalar curvature is less than that uh, 12 over R squared. But inside uh, here, let's say one over 100, uh, very small, at very small uh, ball, uh, I get some number, negative number. Although this lambda is a r relatively small number, but independent, independent of R. Uh, lambda is, since lambda is small number, so this is a tiny amount. Uh, this is a tiny amount. With that, how can I get the big melting? Well, um, one can do that. That's uh, what we do, right? Uh, so, but anyway. Okay, so uh, I uh, need to explain this uh, covering. Oh, I don't have uh, much time. So maybe I try to. So um, I, what I got is on, on the round metric, I got some, uh, I just deformed on a ball so that I got some, some uh, negativity. Let me visualize negative scalar curvature uh, amount in this way. So here I get the, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, red color means negative, negative scalar curvature amount. And then what I did is uh, I uh, so another in S4, in S4, so this part is here. Uh, somewhere here, but I will embed this one in many places, in many places. Maybe I can just denote the uh, center here only. 
So this is radius R ball, but this is radius 1. So if R is large, then I can put many, many, uh, many, many such things. So, so um, after that, I got the uh, negative amount uh, all accumulated on each here. Although this is small size, but the, uh, you get lots of such balls. Now, next, uh, I, will, I will diffuse this one. I will spread out uh, this negative amount uh, to, to a little far away. Not far away, but it's, uh, let's say, this is one radius one ball, but then I will diffuse this out, diffuse this amount outside uh, of this small ball. So then, let's say, 10 ball. So then, on each, uh, on each ball, I do that. 10 ball, 10 ball. Then what will, so if I do that, then I'll get the uh, all negative uh, uh, scalar curves spread it around uh, so that I will get all negative uh, um, at least, uh, at least uh, here in this, in this whole region. Somewhere uh, the negativity may be large, somewhere may be small, but, but there will be some negative amount uh, on, on this whole region. Now, when I do that, some people may laugh at it because uh, this sounds just uh, too fancy. And how can, when, when I do that, uh, one diffusion may get inter interfere with each other, so that could ruin. But this is so-called the Rokan process. I admire uh, his work for that. So um, that's, uh, that is a, a delicate step, actually, which may be called the Rokan process. So uh, the, the point of the, this uh, process is that when yeah, it uh, shouldn't be interfere each other, so that uh, really uh, I don't have time to explain the, the detail. But yeah, really this works. Uh, uh, and uh, then actually this uh, Rokan process is done in two steps. Uh, but the, um, I don't have time to distinguish them. So uh, just uh, just step one, step two gives the final picture like this, uh, as I shown. So negative. Uh, uh, negativity of scalar curvature is all spread around, at least uh, in, in this uh, region. So let's, now, the, what is the last step? I just uh, push back the scale. Here I have R, if I push back, then I'll get um, one ball, one ball now, but the, uh, I'll get, uh, this size is now shrinked down to the, this one with the negativity all here, just, uh, just uh, I, I just scale down by homostatic change, and uh, here, although the uh, this uh, the negative um, the I lower the scalar curvature down by certain, let's say, uh, epsilon amount, but since R is very large, so um, the uh, when you multiply when you shrink down so much, then the this negativity amount uh, is now actually a bit, so when I take a negative so it. You know, the scalar curvature of this one, when R is large, scalar curvature of this whole thing, the uh, sphere, round the sphere, is close to zero when R is large. Since I lowered this, um, this by finite amount, so it's almost zero minus uh, some small amount. So it's negative here. Everywhere it's negative. So when you, squish, uh, when you shrink down by R, then this negative minus R multiplied with, with the R squared uh, becomes a really big number, uh, big, num big negative number, so that you get minus m scalar curvature the the, of the last one less than minus m in here. But uh, the other parts, the round matrix is not changed. That's how we get the uh, scalar curvature melting on S4. Now, yeah, that's a, uh, the idea of uh, on S4. So for, let me, um, Let me just uh, now talk about the uh, open problems, yeah. So, um, of course, the question is, uh, uh, ev does every metric with the scalar curvature melting? And uh, further, does every metric uh, admit uh, scalar curvature melting of big scale? Now, if a big melting, uh, this is uh, the point I already mentioned a little bit. If a big melting exists uh, for every metric, for every metric, if one can prove this one, that it implies that the space of metrics with non-positive, uh, at least uh, non-positive scalar curvature is connected. So non-positive means less than or equal to zero. 
one can y less than or equal to zero. You you can talk about less than or equal to some number alpha, but somehow I, if alpha is a positive number, then there is a scaling argument going on. So uh, actually, this non-positivity is a, is the most important part. So uh, one may uh, so I think uh, I believe that. If, being if I have an argument uh, of being melting, since this being melting uses a local deformation argument, just as I've I shown, usually this kind of argument goes on, can, with that kind of argument goes on to prove that, uh, here I, I, show, I, can sh I claim that this result can show crankiness, but actually I think it can probably prove that the space of uh, a matrix with a non particle scalar coverage is a contractible, actually. Um, yeah, I mentioned that the uh, ROCAM actually proved that negative scalar curvature matrix are contractible, and whereas the uh, matrix, I uh, just for comparison, space of matrix with a positive scalar curvature is, has quite a topology that's quite well known. Um, I guess that's uh, all in this talk. Uh,